to get a postdoc or to not get a postdoc? That is the question and we're going to be answering that question in today's video. Hey there, if this is your first time on this channel, my name is Dr. Gertrude Nantra and on this channel, I talk about career, productivity and the PhD life. If any of that sounds exciting to you, consider hitting that subscribe button. So before we even delve into the answering the question, I, I wanted to make, say this, especially for international PhDs, because I was an international PhD. And so what I'm going to say is going to apply to you. So for a lot of international PhDs, when we finish our PhDs, we don't actually have that many choices as to whether to go into industry or some other role um, or an academic postdoc. Most of the time, for international PhDs, the, the, the path that opens up to us more easily is an academic postdoc, just because a lot of biotech companies, a lot of biopharmaceutical companies are unwilling to employ um, people that are still on F1 visa or maybe you have a temporary um, visa. And so my advice there is if you do plan on remaining in the United States, then um, go ahead and look into the EB2 National Interest Waiver Visa. I did a video on that right here. I, I highly recommend that you check out if you are done with your PhD, that visa pathway is a perfect pathway for you. And even more than my suggestion, I would say find an immigration lawyer and speak to them so that you can kind of sort that out because without that, it can be really difficult to do anything outside of academia. So now that I've addressed that, let me talk a little bit about my own experience as a postdoc. So I think my postdoc was fantastic. I had a great advisor. We were doing some great research. I, I was able to get one first author paper from the lab as well as two middle author papers for which I am completely grateful. And I was in that postdoc for about three years. It was two years and 11 months, I believe. Um, and it ended because funding had ended. Okay, so I think it was a great experience. I did have a positive experience. However, looking back now that I'm five years out of my PhD almost six years out of my PhD I will say that if you are currently a PhD and you're looking at whether or not to go for a postdoc there are a few things that I'd like you to consider and think about the first thing is are you planning on staying in academia and by that I mean do you plan to become a researcher do you plan to become a professor at like a bigger university okay in the US you know that there are so many categories of higher institutions higher or tertiary institutions you're gonna have your your community colleges the two-year colleges are you gonna have four-year colleges that are more are smaller and don't have an emphasis on research then you're going to have these middle universities that are bigger have a focus on research and teaching and then you're going to have the really large universities where there is a huge focus on research right and so you have all these opportunities in academia all these tiers in academia that you can you know pick up on i would say for the last two for the middle size universities and the large universities where the focus is heavy on research if you plan on being a part of those types of institutions then yes a postdoc is going to be completely valuable to you because it's going to give you a lot more skills you're going to learn um you're going to expand your knowledge you're definitely going to expand your network um and as a postdoc you are given a bit more responsibility or more responsibility i would say um and even some postdocs will end up functioning in sort of a managerial role in the lab although we don't necessarily get paid for that <laughs> so if you plan on teaching and doing research at those mid-sized to large universities then yes absolutely a postdoc is valuable and actually is highly recommended if you want to get positions there now if you plan on teaching at a community college or at a much smaller four-year college then a postdoc may not necessarily come in handy what's really important with those positions is teaching experience which I know some PhD programs offer so if you are currently entering into a PhD program then you need to think about oh, will I get opportunities to teach 
or if you're currently in a PhD program, then seek out opportunities to teach. When I had an idea that I would like teaching to be a part of my career after my PhD, I began to talk to my PI about it. And I did my PhD at a medical school. And so we were not allowed to teach the medical students but through speaking with her and other um, people in the department I did have an opportunity to teach a class um, and I was able to sort of leverage that and say hey I, I've, I've kind of taught a class before um, especially when I was getting my current position where I'm teaching so it is important for you to consider that now if you want nothing to do with academia please don't get a postdoc. Okay, I know that this is harder for international PhDs, but if you're listening to me and you're not an international PhD, then don't do that. Don't don't go get a postdoc just because you think it's the next logical step. Because in your case, it is not. Rather, I would say, um, begin to network and begin to do informational interviews with people in roles that you would like to pursue. So these days, there's so many um, roles that non-research roles you can pursue as a PhD. I did a video, another video you can check out here for non-research jobs for PhDs. One of the things that I did in San Diego, in, uh, in, in the, I live in the San Diego area, and there is the American Women in Science um, community. So I, I've been to a few of their meetings um, and networked with people that were in certain roles that I was interested in. And that got me on people's radars, okay, and, and gave me some inside information. So that's what I mean by informational interviews. You you should plan on speaking with people in in, in, in medical writing, in uh, medical science liaison, in being a scientist in industry. Talk to people I, I would say like make a list of of professions that you you would be interested in outside of academia and then check those out and once you do begin to speak with people the biggest thing that I find in getting a the job that you want is networking to be honest is networking a great place for you to start networking is LinkedIn especially now that we have um, you know what in the the bug that is terrorizing the whole world um, you know you 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 a great place to start is LinkedIn. Um, and when you get on LinkedIn, talk to people, engage and post. You can come follow me on LinkedIn. Okay, I post uh, a little bit about PhD careers. Um, and there are other people who um, I follow who are like that. So check those other people out. I'll leave some names here. All right. So as far as getting a postdoc is concerned, I would say if you really want to go the academic route and teach and do research in those mid-sized to large universities, then yes, absolutely. Um, but you should also understand that as a postdoc, you are not paid very much. All right. I think the average pay of a postdoc in the United States, the first year postdocs, I'm going to leave that here. I remember when I started out, it was somewhere around maybe 45,000 a year. Now, this was a big leap from the half of that that I was getting as a PhD student. Um, but when you live in the U.S. and you live in, especially you live in different um, certain parts of the U.S., that amounts to very little income to cover your rent and cover your food and take care of your family, to be honest. So look, postdocs are great, um, but if you don't want to pursue the past that I mentioned don't don't bother um and if you want to pursue other paths then set up inf informational interviews network and get to know people and in doing that you'll get to know what's required and you will be able to land that dream job